We're moving out on another episode this week on Military Collectors. This week, for all you aviation buffs, we've got a special show. Corsair, P-51 Mustang. Hey, I tell you what, stay tuned because we're going to have some fast flying action this week on Military Collectors. Well, joining me now is the father and son team and the beautiful owners of this P-51 Mustang behind us. And it's Alex, he's the pilot now, he's the younger doctor, and his father, Joe, whose passion was behind restoring and acquiring this airplane. And Alex, I tell you what, it's so wonderful to have you and your dad here because I know that this was his passion. Uh, that's really why I wanted him here, and that's what Military Collectors sure. is all about. It's about the people behind these wonderful machines. And so, tell us just a little bit about, um, you know, how you how you all found this plane. Well, I think ever since my father saw one in the 1940s, he he just had to have a P-51, and I know many people throughout the country can, of course, relate with that. This this was considered the the war winner, and just a beautiful airplane. And and we've been so blessed to be able to fly this airplane and show it to other folks, particularly 70 plus years after the war. My father acquired this airplane around 1992-93 and got it from a guy in California, was able to bring the plane back here and when he got it back it was in bare metal, stars and bars, not as it's seen now. And had it taken down to, to Florida where it was torn apart. He met a gentleman by the name of, at that time, Colonel Bruce W. Carr. Um, he was a World War II ace, actually flew World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. And he met Bruce, liked Bruce's story. If any of you ever Google his name, then uh, you can certainly read some interesting things about him. But nevertheless, had the plane repainted to honor him and what he did during World War II. All of the kills that you see on the side are his kills. Of course, there was uh, at least one more uh, that was maybe unconfirmed in Korea and he went on to fly over 200 missions in Vietnam. But at any rate, uh, Bruce was there during the rebuild, the repaint. My father was back and forth with him. And when it was done in 1993, early 94, my father just basically tossed him the keys and said, have at it, go have fun. And Bruce really got to enjoy several years of flying this aircraft again in his 70s after having been out of the airplane for 50 plus years. He even took it to Oshkosh in 1994 came to Shiraz, picked the plane up, and was gone. What was that, about two weeks, I think. And uh, after the show, flew around enjoying seeing a lot of his buddies on the way home, you know, but the weather was always an yeah. issue. <laughs> well, Joe, I, I have to ask you, um, how significant to you was it to have Colonel Carr fly your passion and your airplane? There's no way that I can convey the reader, uh, the feeling that I found myself in the presence of Colonel Carr. Of Colonel Carr. And then knowing a bit about his history, mm -hmm. uh, he, he just locked it all together. Well, I tell you now, I have to also, this is a special story now. Everybody needs to pay attention to this because fathers and sons do this, okay? Being doctors of the Newsom family, uh, I understand you had a special challenge before <laughs> you got to stick and fly this thing, okay? That's right. Tell all the folks about that and what your dad, uh, well, didn't make you, but he challenged you to do. Well, as you can imagine, I, I, I grew up around airplanes. My father had me in the airplane on pillows, so of course, the natural progression was, when am I going to be able to fly the Mustang? And after I got my pilot's license, of course, the years kept passing. When are you going to let me have the opportunity? And finally, he hung the carrot out on the stick and said, when you finish med school, and I think what he meant was when, when you can put the gas in it and you can keep it up, then you can fly it. So true to his word, about, I don't know, about 15 days before I graduated medical school, we had one of our uh, close friends um, Mr. Elliot Cross came up from, from Florida and checked us out, checked myself out, checked Wendell Hall and uh, Barry Avan out at the same time. And uh, I must say he was true to his word and, and we were 
it was some pretty pretty hairy flights there getting used to it but uh we've managed to to keep it in one piece and keep ourselves in one piece so well from from a collection standpoint alex you know these are not for the the uh, for the light of pocketbook, okay, and and the only thing I reason I say that is is, is not that you have to be rich, but you have to be committed to maintain True. and to fly them and to main really just maintain their airworthiness. Is that getting to be a challenge for parts and and all of that now? Because how many of these are actually left flying in the United States? There's approximately 150 in the world that are flying, and parts are surprisingly available. Really? Uh, it, it's this being one of the more popular warbirds, uh, you can you can get parts uh, for the most part. Now they have a, a price tag associated with them, but you're exactly right. It's, it's the passion that allows us to keep doing this because financially it makes absolutely no sense at all. <laughs> well, you know, and and I find that myself. Although I was an Army infantry guy, okay, I I've I've flown in in airplanes and all that, but um, I always kind of like my feet on the ground, okay. <laughs> and I'm sure Joe, you can appreciate that. But you know, anybody that collects anything of military vintage has to be prepared. Uh, it's going to cost you something, and that's okay uh, because again, you need to preserve it for history. Stay tuned. When we come back, we're going to be talking about the 1945 Goodyear built Corsair that I'm sitting in right now. I'm not going to fly it. You know me. I'm a ground pounder. Infantry all the way. But I want to showcase one of the guys whose collection and passion is all about this airplane. Don't go away. Military Collectors is brought to you today by GovPlanet, your online auction site for government equipment. By Chevrolet. Chevrolet, find new roads. And by the South Carolina National Guard Museum. Discover the Palmetto State's military history. If you're in the market for military surplus for recreation or construction, or you just want to own a piece of military history, go online to GovPlanet.com's weekly auction. GovPlanet has auctions every Wednesday, where you can find and bid on numerous items. All items are protected by ironclad insurance, which makes sure that what's in GovPlanet's report is what you're getting. Be sure to join GovPlanet every Wednesday for their weekly auction, and check in often to see their ever-changing inventory. GovPlanet, your online auction site for government equipment. Travel back into time. Experience how America gained its freedom and fought to keep it. Come see up close the weaponry and the stories of the United States military from 1670 to present day at the South Carolina Military Museum in Columbia, South Carolina. The South Carolina Military Museum is one of the largest military museums in the country, and its mission is to honor and chronicle the American soldier with artifacts and exhibits. The South Carolina Military Museum, preserving our military legacy for all generations. Welcome. Hi. Today we're going to be comparing the roll-formed high-strength steel bed of the Chevy Silverado to the aluminum bed of this competitor's truck. Nice. You want to grab that empty toolbox for me? Let's start here with the aluminum bed. That's wow. a big hole. Huge. We got Swiss cheese for a truck here. <laughs> I'm curious to see if that will do the same thing with the Chevy. Well, let's find out. Same spot, same angle, same empty toolbox. Took it way better. The steel held up. Silverado proved it is the toughest truck here. Welcome back to Military Collectors. As promised, we're going to be talking about and showcasing a 1945 Corsair. And the collector, well, this individual from the PD region of South Carolina is responsible for grabbing this thing in New Zealand. And now here it is in the beautiful state of South Carolina and one of 20 still flying in the United States. Barry Avent. Barry, listen, my friend, I know that the passion has to be there because this is no small undertaking. Tell me about this plane. Well, it's a 1945 Goodyear built Corsair that uh, was then leased to the New Zealand Air Force in World War II and actually flew Pacific battle time in late in the war of World War II before the Japanese um, surrendered to us. and. Uh, we were fortunate enough, or I was fortunate enough, to be able to find it in derelict condition, have it shipped back to the U.S. and put together right here in Charles, South Carolina. Well, let's talk about this derelict condition, okay? And, and, and as folks can kind of follow along here as you talk, from first inception to rebuild, kind of what was it when, when you found it? I mean, what'd you think? 
It was a. It was very interesting. I've been looking for a project like this. Uh, this is my favorite airplane. Uh, nothing against the P-51s. They're beautiful and they're great airplanes and they're favorite too. But the Corsair was always my childhood favorite growing up. And the TV show Bob Bob Black Sheep was the kids' TV show we watched growing up and everything else. So it was kind of neat um, to get my hands on something like this. Has always been a dream, and it all worked out. You know. It, came in 2008 is when we finally got the last shipment in took three shipments of containers to get it here and uh, then we had what we call a recession and <laughs> and so things slowed down a little bit so we weren't able to to go right to work on the airplane immediately we, we had to put it away for a little while but uh, with Wendell uh, Hall at Hall Aviation and his expertise and his abilities and multiple people from other places. Uh, Nelson Easel out in Texas uh, was a, a big help to us. Jim Tobel, who in, here in South Carolina, great for information, all have histories with Corsairs. And uh, Wendell has a very good characteristic and very crafting ability in his in his style of work. He can, and we had to bend metal. You'll see pictures, you'll see all kind of stuff of what all we had to do uh, from 2011 to 2014 to get it back in the air and get it flying again. Well, okay. Now, it had not flown from 46 until 2011, 2012? 14. 2014. That's correct. Wow. So 1946 to 2014. Um, I have the logbook entries of the guy who ferried the airplane out of the Pacific Islands back to New Zealand to go in the junkyard, and that was in 1946. And um, the... Uh, Airplane then went into the junkyard and it stayed in the junkyard till a New Zealand fellow got it and then he put it in his hangar and we ended up buying it or I ended up buying it from from him and took everything out of his hangar and uh, we had 99% of an airplane when we got it. Goodness. So we didn't have to do a whole lot of work. It was all there. It was well, let's very, very let's talk a little bit about show and tell now, okay? Because okay. now you got it. It's a beautiful, beautiful airframe. Now, what do you do with it? Okay. Well, history. I mean, I love putting history back together. I've had multiple World War II aircraft. I've had multiple antique airplanes. And being able to, to go to events and go to shows, Wendell and Alex and I fly a lot of events in North and South Carolina uh, where people that can come experience their life in the past and bring it back to life. Uh, I had a C-47, which is a DC-3 that was uh, in military colors and I did it first until I got the Corsair up and running and then I sold the DC-3. Um, but being able to take folks who gave their lives, not only just give their life, gave their time to help keep this country free, to, to do what we're able to do, we wouldn't be able to fly them if it weren't for what they had done. So putting the history back in front of them for them to be able to come back and see it is very important. Stay tuned when Military Collectors comes back, we'll take a look at the T-28 trainer airplane and the pilot who has restored it and keeps it flying to preserve history. How's it going? Hi. Today we're going to be comparing the roll-formed high-strength steel bed of the Chevy Silverado to the aluminum bed of this competitor's truck. Awesome. Alright, let him drop. Let's see how the aluminum bed of this truck held up. Oh, wow. that's a good size puncture. That's all the way through for sure. Full on crack here. If you're aluminum now, you're gonna go, ooh. Let's check out the Silverado steel bed. Wow. Yeah, a couple dents. I'd expect more dents. Chevy clearly held up better than the Ford. Travel back into time. Experience how America gained its freedom and fought to keep it. Come see up close the weaponry and the stories of the United States military from 1670 to present day at the South Carolina Military Museum in Columbia, South Carolina. The South Carolina Military Museum is one of the largest military museums in the country, and its mission is to honor and chronicle the American soldier with artifacts and exhibits. The South Carolina Military Museum, preserving our military legacy for all generations. If you're in the market for military surplus for recreation or construction, or you just want to own a piece of military history, go online to GovPlanet.com's weekly auction. GovPlanet has auctions every Wednesday, where you can find and bid on numerous items. All items are protected by ironclad insurance, which makes sure that what's in GovPlanet's report is what you're getting. Be sure to join GovPlanet every Wednesday for their weekly auction, and check in often to see their ever-changing inventory. GovPlanet, your online auction site for government equipment. Roger that.
Welcome back. In this segment, I'm going to be talking to, well, Mr. Aviation here in the PD of South Carolina, and it's Wendell Hall, Hall Aviation, right here in the beautiful state of South Carolina, a little town of Chira, who would have thunk it, right in our backyard. But he is responsible for the maintenance and a lot of the restoration of not only of Barry Avent's Corsair, but also of his own here. Wendell, listen, you are the man, I'm told, okay? So you're the everything behind these collectors but you're a collector yourself okay yeah. let's talk a little bit about in this segment let's talk about your mechanic restoration capabilities because again you've kind of played a key role not only in helping maintain and the p51 mustang of alex and joe's but the complete restoration of this corsair was on you yep yep uh, the corsair was a really unique project because it was the, it was so huge in the first place and, and one of most everybody's favorite airplanes so we, we had a lot of joy in going through it and uh, turned out to be a real nice airplane. Well uh, let's talk about okay three and a half years yeah I mean that's yeah. a lot of wrench turning. It is it is. I mean the patience involved yeah. in that okay I know you have the passion behind it because these airplanes behind us of course that T-28 back there with Navy all over it although <clears throat> you know I I happen to be an Army guy. Is there a way maybe we can put the Army thing in there? Maybe? No. Yeah, we can put it on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, three and a half years on a rebuild. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that, I mean, and the knowledge that it takes. I mean, is that manuals in the floor? I mean, you, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah it was. And uh, the, uh, you work on projects sometime when you get to them, and that airplane, you couldn't do that. I mean, it was. It was day and night a lot of times, six days a week, and, you know, to uh, how big it was. It was just, we just had to go to it and go to it hard in order to finish it. You know? Well, when, when you and Barry found it and you finally got it back here in three containers and mm -hmm. parts and pieces yep. and whatever it was, there's one significant uh, thing on there that Barry tells me that you helped uncover there, but I guess both of you all did, but yep. mm -hmm. some significant role play from World War II. Yep. It started with a female's name. Yep. Tell us about Rosie the Riveter and yeah. what you found. We found uh, four signatures on one of the wings, which you don't see because it's covered over, but they tell us that when these airplanes were built, each time a, a project was done, the lady that did it or the guy maybe, had to sign it. Wow. So if they found a problem, they knew who to go back to. Most of them got primed over, but these ended up being exposed and and it was, I mean, it's like touching history, you know. Wow. And, and uh, we had somebody do some research. One of them was actually still living when we started the project, Kitty. And, uh, and uh, before we got through with it, she passed, but then her sister saw the wing we carried it to Virginia to a Rosy River to gather it. And her sister just cried when she saw it. So that was that was pretty special. Oh, that is pretty special. Well, listen, I know you're responsible for for check rides and uh, a lot of instruction here at Hall Aviation. And and you know, again, um, my hats off to you for your passion and the collection of just what you've amassed here. But your friends as well, because yeah. again, you know, every threesome. There has to be one smart guy in the bunch. Okay, so give me, give me right there. I, 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 okay. I, yeah, right. okay. Yeah. You can't deny that. That's true. And right. you've got to have that person there who, who understands these airplanes because listen, the margin of error there is, yeah. is this. Yep. There is yeah. none. Okay. Yep. Or we all know catastrophic failure. So, and I know we all love them. We do. Who are aviators? Uh, gosh, a lot of many of my friends and but that's why I was infantry, okay? I, yeah. Huh? I, a Jeep is a lot easier to operate. But yep. when we come back, I want you to talk about these two beautiful trainers behind us okay. and your devotion to that. So, folks, when we come back, we're going to be talking more with Wendell Hall about these beautiful airframes behind us right here on Military Collectors. Military Collectors is brought to you today by GovPlanet, your online auction site for government equipment. By Chevrolet, Chevrolet, find new roads. And by the South Carolina National Guard Museum. Discover the Palmetto State's military history. 
If you're in the market for military surplus for recreation or construction, or you just want to own a piece of military history, go online to GovPlanet.com's weekly auction. GovPlanet has auctions every Wednesday, where you can find and bid on numerous items. All items are protected by Ironclad Assurance, which makes sure that what's in GovPlanet's report is what you're getting. Be sure to join GovPlanet every Wednesday for their weekly auction, and check in often to see their ever-changing inventory. GovPlanet, your online auction site for government equipment. Travel back into time. Experience how America gained its freedom and fought to keep it. Come see up close the weaponry and the stories of the United States military from 1670 to present day at the South Carolina Military Museum in Columbia, South Carolina. The South Carolina Military Museum is one of the largest military museums in the country, and its mission is to honor and chronicle the American soldier with artifacts and exhibits. The South Carolina Military Museum, preserving our military legacy for all generations. Welcome. Hi. Today we're going to be comparing the roll-formed high-strength steel bed of the Chevy Silverado to the aluminum bed of this competitor's truck. You want to grab that empty toolbox for me? Let's start here with the aluminum bed. That's wow, a big hole. Huge. We got Swiss cheese for a truck here. <laughs> I'm curious to see if that will do the same thing with the Chevy. Well, let's find out. Same spot, same angle, same empty toolbox. Took it way better. The steel held up. Silverado proved it is the toughest truck here. Welcome back. Well, Wendell, I tell you what, I understand now, you know, the really the relationship amongst you three between Alex, Barry, and you. Um, they write the checks, okay, and you make it happen, huh? There we, go. there we go. Well, listen, on this segment, I want to specifically talk about your passion now, which is this beautiful trainer over here. This happens to be Barry's, yep. but I thought it was appropriate because, again, this is the one that everybody started with in order to have to give you a check ride. That's right. In order to fly these other two, the Corsair and the Mustang, of course, your T28 back here. But let's start with this one. Talk to us about this airframe and really what was its purpose back in World War II? It was uh, the advanced trainer. Uh, back in World War II, they started out in like the PT that was down there, or the Stearman, and then moved to the BT-13, which was a little more advanced. And then this was the advanced trainer, which after here, you went to the Corsair, Mustang, or whatever the fighter was of the day. So this airplane was uh, had a little bigger engine, a little harder to fly, so it, they got you ready for the big ones. So. Well, first of all, let me, before we move down to yours, tell me a little bit about your years of experience in flying. How, how many stick hours you got? I'm not sure. I quit logging a long time ago, but, you know, over 8,000 hours or something oh flying, goodness. you know, with, with whatever, you know. Yeah. Over the years, I, I used to have a friend that bought and sold airplanes about every month, and we were somewhere across the United States getting in something different. So wow. I was fortunate to be able to get a lot of versatile you know, well, to, that, to, that's maturity and experience, okay? Yeah, and it has yeah. nothing to do with our gray hair. Right, yeah, uh, yeah. Some of us just, it turns, you know, unlike our two, your two other partners there, they, they still got a little color in theirs, but, yeah. you know, they probably scared out of you a little bit. Mine turns gray and then uh, most yeah, of them turn yeah, loose. Yeah. So. Well, listen, let's, let's kind of walk and talk here. Let, let's talk a little bit about your plane, this T-28. I mean, this is a great airframe. Yep. Um, tell me a little bit about the background of this plane and how you got it. This airplane was uh, spent most of its life in Pensacola training, uh, training pilots. It was used a lot for instrument training, and uh, it actually replaced the T-6. Okay. The T-6 was kind of, it was great for its day, but now at the end of the war, we started to get into the jets, which is more complex airplanes. So North American, which built the T-6 and the uh, Mustang, designed this airplane uh, a lot more complicated than it really needed to be to fly but it, uh, it got the guys ready with uh, multiple electrical systems, hydraulic systems, so it just advanced them. The cockpit looks almost like an F-86 inside. Wow. So that was their, their goal here, was to, to get the guys ready for the jet age coming. I got you. Well, tell me a little bit about now the restoration of this plane. How long have you had it? Where'd you find it? Had it about two years now, and uh, got it out of Medford, Oregon. And uh, the guy we got it from, of course, he had passed and his wife sold it. He had a couple of them. So we didn't have to do a, a lot of restoration. The engine was timed out, and uh, we we done some various mods to it, scavenge kits and updates. Right. So uh, and uh, so I went to Oregon and flew it back here, and then we started changing the engine, doing the mods, and getting it up to speed. So. Well, you know, I, I normally uh, ask each collector about what they're worth. So, but I'm going to ask you, 
if you had to go buy these, because I know that you buy and sell airplanes mm -hmm. all across mm -hmm. the country, just kind of give me some kind of a price bracket for this, for that, and all up the line. Just briefly, what are this, is the top retail value if, if I was going to go look for one? You'll see these in, on the market for anywhere from 60000 to 200000 Okay. And it's a big range, but uh, a guy completely makes one brand new, he's going to be looking for 200000 Okay. Now, the, the, the T6? The T6 is, uh, they uh, 100 to 180 range. Okay. Now, the Corsair, of course, that, that, that needle's getting smaller. Yeah. Uh, Corsairs and Mustangs, you know, exceed a million and a half to three million, depending on the airplane. On so, the plane, yeah, and both the Mustang as well. Yeah, wow. You know, I mean, they're 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 high end airplanes, and they're the Corsairs. You know, there's not a lot of them left flying, so the less they are, the more they cost. I got so. you. Okay. That's military collectors this week. Normally, you see me riding down the road, moving on to another location in my Jeep, but this week, I got a special ride and a special driver. I'd like to thank all three of my guests this week. My pilot today, Wendell Hall of Hall Aviation, Barry Avent with the beautiful Corsair, and of course, not least but last, is Alex Newsom with his beautiful P-51 Mustang. Military Collectors is moving on out to another location. You've seen these guys fly? Well, I'm now gonna get my chance. All right, Wendell, let's go, brother. Military Collectors is waiting for another show next week. <laughs>